In our geotechnical report, we normally have a section for seismic site classification. Structural engineers use this to get the site coefficient for determination of the seismic loads. In this video, I will discuss this topic. This is on page 91 from Canadian Foundation Engineer Menu. Uh, look at the table 6.1a. Set classification for seismic site response. According to this table, a site is classified into seven classes, ranging from A to B, B, C, D, E, F. But there are the two E's. We should uh, draw a dividing line between here. We should draw a divide line between the upper E and the lower E. A site with a class E will strongly amplify long period ground motions. The upper E use uh, uh, average properties in top 30 meter. The lower E when there's a more than three meters of soil having the following characteristics, then you can classify it as an E instead of using 30 meter. So that's the difference between upper E and the lower E. So A is for hard rock, B for moderate rock, C is for soft rock, or very dense soil. D is a stiff soil, E is a soft soil, F others. Others include liquefiable soil, quick clay, or highly sensitive clay, collapsible soil, and other susceptible to failure or collapse under seismic loading. Uh, which include a very low sand. Low sand, particularly for hydraulic fields, for example, in the oil sands industry, <clears throat> those are tailings sand. Peat or organically greater than three meter. High plastic clay more than eight meter. Soft or medium stiff clay with a thickness greater than 30 meter. So in here we need if 
the clay is more than 30 meter. Even, for example, here, it, uh, for example, if the clay meet the characteristics for class E, but if it is more than 30 meter, then it need to be classified as the class F. On the column set, we can see there is a three criteria. The first one is the shear wave velocity. Second one is the standard penetration N value. But the N value is uh, corrected to 60% energy output for the hammer and also corrected to 100 kPa here 100 kPa overburden stress so normally it's, we call it a N160 the third criteria is the undrained shear strength So that's uh, some explanation about this table. However, there's another resource provide us uh, more information. Commentary G of uh, National Building Code. In this uh, commentary there are several things we need to pay attention first it says here although it is preferable to determine the site class of a non-rock site on the basis of a measured shear wave velocity, it is permissible to use the energy corrected average standard penetration resistance for sand. Or the average undrained shear strength for clay site. So from here we can say first we need to emphasize if a site within the 30 meter depth, there's a both overburden soil and the bedrock. Then we need the first step is we need to separate the overburden soil from the bedrock. So we consider them separately. If a site has a overburden and bedrock within 30 meter, then we use the class for soil as the classification for this site. So that's the first point we need to know. The second is so we 
S30 is the fundamental criteria. It is, it is, it is said somewhere else. Uh, let me see. Okay, so at the last sentence here. When the site classific classification determined from shear velocity, uh, SPTN, and underneath shear strength differ. The classification determined from shear velocity governs. So the second point we need to know is that of the three criteria, shear wave velocity is the fundamental criteria. It has a priority than SPTN and undrained shear strength. So by all means, if possible, we should use shear wave velocity to determine the seismic site classification. Only we don't have that information, then we use SPTN and under the shear strength. Shear velocity applies bedrock, sand so sand site, and clay sites. So that's the second point. So shear velocity is the fundamental criteria. The third point I we need to know is the SPTN applies for sand size. Or in other words, it applies for coarse green soils. The fourth point we need to know is the undrained shear strength applies for clay sites within the upper 30 meter if there is a both sand and clay then we need to separate the, the layers separate the sand and the clay because they use different criteria another thing here it mentioned that the alternative site classification in National Building Code should not should not be used to infer any specific numerical correlation. Should not be used for correlation between those three. In practice, sometimes I found people use SPT to correlate the undrained shear strength. So here, in this commentary, G said that this is not supposed to be the way to do it. So that's the, the fifth point we need to know. But in practice, probably sometimes we, sometimes we have to use SPT to estimate to estimate undrained shear strength and then use undrained shear strength 
to estimate the set, classi set classification. But uh, according to this commentary G, this is not supposed to be the way. Uh, anyway, uh, that's what I noticed in our practice. The sixth point I want to mention is about this part. In the table, it said use the average of the 30 meter uh, within the, the average of the, those values in the upper 30 meter. It didn't mention how to average. Let's put it six, number six. So this averaging method is called a harmonic mean. It's a harmonic mean value. Uh, ha Monic mean e a n. So this is a harmonic mean value. So uh, yeah, that's a the six, the sevens. I need to. Uh, on, I actually I've already mentioned is uh, if within the 30 meter there's a both sand and clay, then we need to separate them. And if N60 and as you are available, the one that gives the greater set coefficient governs. So that's the seventh point we need to know. For example, if the site has both uh, sand and clay, for sand, using this uh, average method, you got a set class, for example, D. Uh, but the clay, you, using this method, you got a set class E. Then the final class will be E. So, the one gives the greater set coefficient governs. Okay, so that's uh, the seven points we need to know in order to correctly in apply that table. Okay, that's all for today. Uh, thanks for watching.